Okay, we are now ready for the second part of our forum this evening. Um, again, uh, the rules are the same in, in terms of timing. Um, and earlier, uh, the two candidates drew not really straws anymore, but <laughs> uh, for who would go first, um, and again, we will be alternating. Um, so we will start with the opening statements, two minutes each, and Mr. Pereira, you are first. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, host of this forum, League of uh, Women Voters in the Haitian American uh, Chamber of Commerce of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, again, my name is Jimmy Pereira. I am the candidate for mayor in the uh, City of Champions, Brockton, Massachusetts. I was born and raised in this city. I've been here for, uh, been here through the, our lowest and highest moments. I've seen the loss of uh, beautiful souls uh, like Laison and uh, uh, Edson Brito. I've lost friends to gun violence, but I've also seen our community come together in unison and strengthen one another. Uh, I love our city and the people who live here. That's why I'm running for mayor. I grew up in the Department of Youth Services and the foster care system, so I know what it's like to struggle for everything I've earned. Growing up in the Brockton public schools and system and working as a youth advocate, I can see that the cracks are getting bigger. Those same cracks that I fell through. When I was in school, I had to make sure that I pushed forward and I'm continuing to do so for our future. I'm running for mayor so that your children and my children don't have to worry about the things we worry about now. We can talk about what's on my resume, my experiences, uh, and, and my degrees, but in my opinion, what's more important is that my experience reflects yours. My dreams for Brockton are your dreams for Brockton. And if I have your vote on November 5th, we can make those dreams a reality. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Well, first of all, good evening. I want to thank everybody uh, for being here tonight. Uh, this is exciting for Brockton, and I appreciate the, the League of Women Voters and uh, the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce, and also the Brockton Public Library for hosting this. My name is Robert Sullivan. I'm from Brockton, born and raised. I went to the Brockton Public Schools. Graduated from Brockton High in 1988. My dad over there was a Brockton High history teacher for over 32 years. Uh, my wife, Maria, I met her in high school, and we're raising three kids, Tommy, age 12, Gracie, nine, and Will, seven. Three children here in Brockton. Two of them go to the Brockton Public Schools. One goes to Trinity Catholic Academy. I'm Brockton. That's why I'm here. When we graduated from college, I went to Boston College. I then went to law school, New England School of Law. I went back to BC Knights to get my MBA. Um, but I came back home because Brockton is home. It's my home. It's your home. It's our home. This election is extremely important. 14 years I've proudly served as a counselor at large, serving the entire city of Brockton. And I've done it admirably and honorably, and I've worked hard every single time I go to City Hall because I'm your voice, and I want to continue that. Uh, 14 years, 14 budgets, working with four mayors, Harrington, Balzardi, the late carpenter, and now Mayor Rodriguez. I've been the city council president four times. Right now, I'm your acting mayor. Mayor Rodriguez is in Cape Verde. I'm the acting mayor today. I think experience matters, ladies and gentlemen. I applaud Jimmy uh, for running for office. It's extremely daunting. We both have young families, but there's no learning curve. Day one, when you become the CEO, the mayor of the city of Brockton, you're overseeing a budget of $440 million, almost a half a billion dollars. I have the experience, I have the training, and I'm not gonna let you down. I haven't for 14 years, and I'm humbly asking for your vote on November 5th. And again, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. We will now start with the questions, and again, you'll have 90 seconds um, to respond to each uh, question. Now that the casino is no longer an option, how can the fairgrounds be used to generate consistent additional revenue for Brockton? Mr. Sullivan. Well, the fairgrounds actually is not a public entity. It's privately owned. Uh, it's owned by the Carney family. Um, you know, there's always been some talks of what's going to happen there down the line. Um, one thing that I brought forward a few years ago uh, during the budget is why don't we try to attract a, a minor league affiliation uh, here to Brockton. You know, we have the Brockton Rocks, the Can-Am League that, that hasn't done so well. Um, but because it's privately owned, we can't dictate as elected officials uh, what can go there. Uh, but I do think uh, something we should consider because Route 123 is Belmont Street. We should think about putting a public safety building on Belmont Street at the fairgrounds. Uh, as a city council, I've already appropriated $250,000 for a feasibility study, and it's looking at different areas around the city. It's antiquated and outdated right now to have the public safety building. Police station right now is, is just a terrible building. Uh, but we need to look at how do we attract businesses. You know, there's tools in the toolbox to do that. But also, ladies and gentlemen, keeping the businesses that are here, making sure they get their fair share. We're residents or business owners in the city of Brockton, and we need to make sure as elected officials that we're the voice. 
So we can talk about different mechanisms under the law, the TIF program, the TIE program, but ultimately it's to try to figure out how do we attract businesses, making sure the economic growth in our tax base increases, because that's going to help what we talked about for the schools. Economic development is key, but at the end of the day, the fairgrounds right now is not owned by the city of Brockton. So we would have to sit down with the owners and try to vet out what's going forward. Ultimately, we need to have something there that's going to benefit the entire city and all the taxpayers. Thank you. Mr. Pereira. Thank you. As my experience as a community and transportation planner working with the region, uh, 17 communities in total, uh, we have the experience where we bring people to the table, we engage different stakeholders, and the Carney family would be one of those stakeholders who we bring to the table, but also looking at other entities and other uh, uh, investive uh, partners that we can engage with to look at what opportunities we can bring to the fairgrounds. Uh, I'd consider a technology park, and actually I'd consider mixed use, uh, because we can also look at the, uh, uh, the agricultural portion of the uh, fairgrounds that has to remain open green space. So I'd like to see a park that would abut the school, uh, but also on the other side, uh, on the commercial side, we would have something sort of a technology park. I'd like to uh, engage with uh, industries like Amazon, like Google, uh, that are right there in Boston and are looking to expand and go to other places, but we're not reaching out and competing with them. Uh, and everything that I focused on as a planner is a multi-pronged approach. So you look at the different facets to economic development to transportation to public safety you make sure that all of those are pressed and are at the at the uh, table as well uh, so with that technology park we'd also like to have linkage programs that may connect the school students to opportunities to uh, internships or even college credit courses that they can uh, be able to uh, attend at these uh, technology sites as well uh, and of course building on to the uh, other development and other uh, projects that are across the streets as you see the uh, vacation of uh, the vacating of uh, stables moving over to uh, the fair grounds uh, and now there's a furniture store there so uh, we want to make sure that we're looking at businesses that are going to come to the city for the long run and also invest in the city for the long run thank you thank you do you see steps that you and your administration could take to work with communities of color to safeguard equal opportunity for business development in Brockton mr. Pereira Thank you, madam. Great question. Uh, I do, I do, and I think we need to foster that development. And something that uh, my opponent said earlier is uh, going into this position, there's a lot of experience that you know you don't have time to learn. Uh, and I actually have the experience that does matter and does count because I have, again, your experience. I've been through a lot of different situations, uh, and as a uh, actually as an at-risk youth, I worked with different programs such as the uh, uh, the Bridge and the Opportunity Gap, where I was able to educate, get educated on uh, proper workforce readiness and job preparedness, and I was able to. To get into the field sheet metal and welding but i wanted to pursue higher learning so some people want to learn a skill uh, or vocational skill and some people want to attend uh, uh, the institute of higher learning so we have to again look at the multifaceted approach utilize the experience that does matter and does count to make sure that we're engaging people from all different backgrounds from all different skill sets and all different classes as well too uh, those that are elderly may want to get back into the field. Uh, some people don't want to retire, <laughs> so uh, they will want to be, basically be retrained uh, into a new field, new sector, and get involved and make some money uh, because you can't always rely on a reverse uh, mortgage. So. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Sullivan. Yeah, I'll, I'll say right now, if I'm elected mayor, we have to do that. I mean, that's, that's just something that needs to happen, not just at City Hall. We need to be inclusive and, and look at the number one asset in the city of Brockton are the people. That's the number one asset. Um, all backgrounds, all different skill sets, all experiences. That's where you, you really have a successful community, the sharing. Uh, Jimmy talked about linkage. We have to share, but the only way to do that if you're the CEO or the mayor is to open it up. Say, you know, the fire department, the police department, uh, schools, DPW. It has to reflect the faces of the community. It needs to at the end of the day. So we can talk about what a mayor needs to do, but as a city councilor and as an acting mayor, what have I done? You know, I filed ordinances that have helped our seniors and our veterans where they can volunteer time and get a price reduction on the real estate taxes. That makes sense. These are the things, common sense approaches that's going to benefit Brockton as we go forward. But the ideas and, and skills that you have that I don't have, that's how you share. So someone had said to me, what's the first thing you'll do if you become elected mayor? You know, hire somebody? I said, no, first thing is you have a community engagement. You sit around a table and you vet out the ideas. That's how my mom and dad grew, brought me up in Brockton, right? That's what Brockton is so special. But we need to make sure that your voice is heard at City Hall and also it's inclusive and open and a collaborative approach. That's how success will be achieved, in my humble opinion. Thank you. What policies and programs do you suggest for supporting 
the 32% of Brockton's population who are under age 18, 15% of whom live in poverty. Mr. Sullivan. Well, right now I have three children, as I told you, and I, I coach basketball, soccer, and, and, and baseball here in the city of Brockton. I'm not the best coach, believe it or not, but I love doing it. Um, you know, when you, when you look at the youth, my slogan is leadership for Brockton's future. The kids are our future. That's what Tony, and, and they were just talking about, right? The schools, that's the future. What I would do is I'm an elected mayor. First of all, is we need to reach out to established programs right now. The Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, and the schools. That's the mechanism. That's what we need to do. Not everybody's going to be a star football player at Brockton High, but we have music and drama. We need to provide these to make sure that our kids get what they need, you know? And it all goes back to the trickle-down theory, right? Brockton does, does not get its fair share of funding on the schools. That just hasn't. This case law, the Webby case, it says that. We're a poorer community and we've not treated right. So at the end of the day, what you need to do if you're elected mayor, city council, school committee is, number one, do it for the right reasons, but be a voice for the youth. Make sure that they have the benefits that are going to bring them forward. Not everyone's going to go to college, but they need to have the skills. There's a collaborative approach right now with the different unions to bring people onto apprentices, hardworking union jobs. It's a great pay and it's a great skill. So these are the things as elected officials you need to be a cheerleader and a voice. And in this case, as a dad and as a husband, I will do it proudly. Mr. Pereira. <clears throat> in order to, in my opinion, to solve a problem, you need to be part of the solution. Uh, you also need to experience that problem as well. I grew up in poverty, a single mother household. I, again, went into the foster care system. I, in third grade, I went to Davis School. I wanted to play baseball, actually t-ball. I wasn't that good at that time. But you had to pay a fee. My mom couldn't afford that fee, so I didn't get to play baseball. I ended up playing outside with my friends, getting into trouble and running away from gunshots. This is the experience that I have. This is the experience that a lot of our children have growing up in the city of Brockton. Our mayor should be a spokesperson that understands us, that knows what we go through, and knows about competency. Uh, Cynthia mentioned it earlier, cultural competency is something that I've educated myself on, especially at the uh, Westfield State University where I minored in ethnic and gender studies. Uh, I focused on things that pertain to my community, the city of Brockton. Uh, what we need to do is, again, look at innovative ways that we're going to engage our youth uh, through the linkage programs, but also, again, through the uh, vocational skills that a lot of our children are uh, looking to engage in as well. I uh, just met a young man who wanted to work on cars, but didn't know where to go to uh, get his uh, uh, certification. Uh, and these are the other things that a lot of our community are going to, but also we want to educate them on other ways to make sure that they can achieve what they want to, such as business management. It's not just opening uh, uh, something that you love doing, but how do you uh, retain and how do you keep it going as well. So these are what I'll be focused on and making sure that we engage our students uh, where they want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Uh, as you know, the, the Mayor of Brockton is the chair of the school committee. In what ways will you commit to creating a school district culture that embraces and implements racial equity practices in educational programs, employment opportunities, and student achievement? Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. I mean, I'm a proud product, product of the Brockton Public Schools. I went to Whitman School on Manaman Street's closed now, with West Junior High and Brockton High. Um, you know, and, and my sister's a teacher at the Brookfield School right now. Um, if I'm elected mayor, you know, vis-a-vis -vis you serve as chair of the school committee, and we need to, we meaning elected officials, need to make sure that we are getting our fair share of funding. And ultimately, what, ladies and gentlemen, is we need to attract uh, students that reflect, I mean, teachers that reflect the student population. But this is what I found. Uh, I didn't grow up rich. My mom's a nurse. My dad's a teacher. I took student loans to get through Boston College, flipping burgers. Um, but I'll tell you, you come out of college with student debt, and right now when you look at what a young teacher in Brockton's paid versus Quincy in Boston, they can't afford to come to Brockton if they have student loans. So we need to come together, first of all, to figure out a pay equity scale to make sure that you know every June when we're doing the budget, people aren't getting riffed and trying to put resumes out. But ultimately, we need to come together and offer what the students deserve. And, and it is, like right now, ESL, it's, it's like what, a six month delay? That's asinine, it's ludicrous, you can't do that. So we need to come together as a community. And again, it's the elected people that are your voices that need to really step up their game. Talk is cheap, you have to produce. That's what an elected official needs to do and that's what I've done and what I'll continue to do with the experience of you humbly honor me on November 5th to be your next mayor. 
Thank you, Mr. Pereira. Yes, uh, would you mind repeating the question? Sure. Time, please? Uh, as you know, the mayor of Brockton is the chair of the school committee. Mm -hmm. In what ways will you commit to creating a school district culture that embraces and implements racial equity practices in educational programs, employment opportunities, and student achievement? Great. Uh, so, again, going through the uh, Brockton school system, I went to several schools, Davis, Huntington, Raymond, uh, North Junior High, uh, and uh, the alternative school, B.B. Russell, Phoenix. So, uh, as I mentioned, I fell through the cracks and they're getting bigger. Uh, and actually, I uh, have uh, one of my teachers in the audience. So, uh, having more teachers that understand where the student comes from is very important, but we also know that cultural competency isn't just something that is uh, 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 been asked to the uh, person of color. Uh, everyone can learn about cultural competency. So we want to work with the teachers that are already there now also to make sure that we're being proactive, not reactive. Uh, and that's why I'm running for mayor because when I seen a problem uh, against uh, when uh, the late Mayor Carpenter was here, I didn't wait uh, for the opportunity. I made sure to pursue uh, what I found to be uh, the issue and I, I run towards the fire. And that's the same thing that I'll be doing now. We have a list of discrimination lawsuits in the city of Brockton that needs to change. Uh, and we need to make sure that the culture, the environment in the city is one that everyone feels like they are represented uh, in the city of Brockton. And that's why I'm running for mayor because uh, we haven't had that in a position such as the mayor's office that will is one, elected, and two, uh, has the experience that, again, the city is uh, waiting to uh, uh, vote for. Because as an average youth, as a planner, uh, as an academic, I've made sure to, again, focus on what we need to uh, address in the city of Brockton. And that's the same thing that a lot of our children are going through now. Uh, so again, making sure that we have the right uh, policies in place that are going to be culturally sensitive, uh, but also educating those out here now to make sure that they know about cultural competency. Thank you. Mr. Pereira, how will you work with the recently reactivated Diversity Commission to increase its impact on the community and your administration if elected? <clears throat> so as the, uh, the uh, community uh, organizer, as a public servant, we know the best thing to do is to go out to the community, go to where the people are. So we want to, again, make sure that we focus on uh, community engagement, making sure that people are knowing what the information is, uh, and with the Diversity Commission, making sure that they also uh, have uh, say in what happens as far as uh, hiring and uh, disciplinary uh, factors. So I want to not just have a Diversity Commission, but I actually want to have a Citizens Advisory Committee. So this committee uh, would help uh, with looking at hiring practices, uh, d uh, recommendation as well, uh, but also look at how we can uh, increase uh, events that are culturally competent. Uh, so instead of just having one particular festival like the Cave Writing Festival, uh, why not Why not have a multicultural uh, festival? Why not uh, make sure that we educate each other on uh, our uh, different experiences so that we can know each other? Uh, because when we're left in the unknown, uh, you get a little bit uncomfortable. So uh, we need to break down those walls and make sure that, again, we're uh, providing a better uh, environment for people to learn from each other uh, and a better environment for people to educate and express their experiences as well. Uh, and again, as a public servant, it's making sure that I, if elected, uh, bring forth the information that is there and making sure, again, that we are engaging the people that, are, uh, that we are serving. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I mean, I would, without question, and I have worked with diversity commission members. I mean, Tony Branch, who, who was a candidate for mayor not too long ago, I mean, that's, that's what it means. If you run for office, you're in the people business, right? And, and you need to make sure that you're a voice for the people. But again, I'm, I'm a white guy, age 49. I can't change my color or my age, but I'm from Brockton. And at the end of the day, it's to try to come together and bridge the gap and make sure that there's a voice and everyone feels that, you know, number one, they're getting their fair share, they're being treated appropriately. And, and again, I, I've been going to a lot of houses of worship. We can learn from clergy. We can learn from congregation members. We can learn from the Campello, Montello Business Association, the Downtown Business Association, the schools. But the number one thing we can learn from are people engaged people that have their concerns and their questions. And one thing I'm proud to say as a counselor at large, when I was the president in 2012, I stood at the podium when I took the oath and I said, listen, every two years I see the school committee, that's crazy, we're duly elected the same way, let's do these quarterly meetings. We did these quarterly meetings at the middle schools so that we could share ideas, get ideas, suggestions, and criticisms. That's what it means to serve, to do it for the right reasons at all time. And that's what I've done, and I'm going to continue to do that. I mean, win or lose, I'm in Brockton. Brockton's home, but we need to have a safe home, a clean home, and an inclusive home so that everybody feels that, you know what, Brockton is a place that I want to live in and raise my family. We don't want to see families going out. 
Home is home, but you need to make sure your home is being protected, and you only have that by having the right people being your voice at City Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Describe the top two environmental and sustainable initiatives that you believe should be implemented in Brockton. Well, I'll tell you some, some that I've done. <laughs> the bright field, the solar field, I voted to approve that uh, on, down, down the street. I mean, it's, 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 you know, Thomas Edison came to Brockton, right? We have first in Brockton, um, but I was proud as a city councilor to vote that when I was adamantly opposed to the power plant. I went to the state, I spoke at hearings, it wasn't right. Another thing that I did as one of the elected officials was I voted to approve appropriations to have an air quality monitor on a Gilmore school. Believe it or not, the high asthma rate in Ward 4 is off the charts medically. It just doesn't make sense. So to go green is what we need to do. Harness the wind, harness the sun. That's what it's about. The LED lights, I cheerleaded that by saying, let's buy the street lights from National Grid. I went to Mayor Belzardi and said, Linda, we got to buy these lights. We're paying too much money. She said, we're not in the light business. I said, we're going to be. We bought the lights for 42000 Year one, we saved over 600000 Year two, over 500000 Reoccurring cost savings. Just thinking outside the box. Then when Mayor Carpenter came in, I said, Bill, that was phase one. Phase two, every light in Brockton is going to be changed to LED. It's a 10-year warranty. It looks brighter. We, we do a 20-year municipal bond, amortize it. It's going to pay for itself. You come through Brockton now, looks better, looks cleaner, right? Visually. And then in the crime ridden areas, it's height and light, which is the police loving right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm a cheerleader for any advanced technology that's going to benefit Brockton, but I think my track record speaks for itself. Mr. Pereira. Yes. <clears throat> So when we look at the environment, we know that uh, you know there's poor air quality, uh, you know not just in one section of the city but throughout the entire city. Uh, we also know that being proactive means looking at not just the successes but how we go even further. So uh, lights are great, but you know pedestrians are still getting hit um, by vehicles. Uh, so when you look at the environment, you also look at livability. Do I feel safe? Do I feel comfortable? Not just the air that I'm breathing, but the atmosphere around me. Can I walk across the street? and not get um, pegged by a car. Uh, so these are the things that, you know, it's the same old, same old, and I think it's time that we look at the bigger picture and how do we advance that with community place making, uh, by making sure that we look at uh, the, uh, the uh, health assessments as well, too, and the data that's there. Uh, knocking on doors, I've knocked in certain areas in uh, different uh, parts of the city, and I've been hearing about uh, the poor uh, water quality as well, too, and uh, looking at uh, even the, uh, the, uh, the capped landfill that's on the uh, south side of the city. Uh, there are long-term effects that we need to look at what is happening, such as leaching. Uh, is that going into our water uh, our, our aquifers? Is that going into the uh, uh, pipes that we have in the city? Uh, or is that going into our homes as well? Uh, we also need to look at uh, place making. So that means making sure that our parks are clean and make sure that uh, they're connected as well. Uh, if you go down Main Street right now, you'll see some bicycle lanes. Uh, that helps with greenhouse gas emissions when bicyclists are using it, but they're not using it as much as they should. So we need to, again, educate people. Uh, we need to engineer the environment and meaning that the uh, infrastructure that we put in, making sure that's innovative. So I want to look at water turbines throughout the uh, river system here. And again, other innovative things that we can work with other institutions here in the city Thank and the you. greater area. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to give you a little bit of a break to think about. Um, is there anything you would like to add um, about why you're running for mayor or how your tenure would benefit Brockton that you might not have mentioned in your opening statement? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pereira, after you drink your water. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Good uh, break. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, the experience that I've experienced is the experience that many of our Brocktonians have experienced. For over half a decade, I've been working with the Regional Planning Agency, Old Colony Planning Council, working for you, uh, working for the greater Brockton area as well. Uh, knowing where the data uh, research is, I've been out there collecting it. So when we look at our high crash intersections, I've been there witnessing and counting the data uh, and actually witnessing the accidents that happened before me while working. Uh, when we look at the uh, crime uh, areas as well too, guess what, I've lived there as well. Uh, and I've uh, seen the situations and I've again uh, looked to bring those solutions by being a community activist. I've worked with local uh, community members uh, in our parks, the park associations, the neighborhood associations. I've uh, continued to do that not just through my uh, professional experience but through my personal experience as a father of two uh, that are in the school system as well. And again, uh, as a youth growing up in the city, I still see, uh, I've seen the uh, issues and they continue to exist now. 
so as a uh, Brocktonian, uh, as a professional working uh, for the region and the state, uh, I have also, again, worked on the solutions that we need to bring forth. Uh, we know that there's going to be over $600 million uh, projects going down for the South Coast Rail Extension. We have three uh, stations there. We have dollars coming for the uh, two-way Main Street. We need to have somebody that's been there at the table uh, designing these plans and working with the stakeholders uh, from our government entities to our nonprofit organizations to uh, our community members. And we need to make sure that, again, we have a public servant that's going to bring the people forth to the table. Uh, I've been doing this, again, as a professional planner, as a uh, ad academic person, and also as a personal Brontonian, born Thank and you. raised. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, if I mean, if I'm elected mayor, uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure we have more police on the streets. We don't have a safe community right now. Not just filling spots for retirees, but hiring new police. And people say, well, where do you come up with the money? For 14 years, I've been doing 14 budgets. There's an overtime mechanism. And I understand collective bargaining as a lawyer, I'm trained in that, but there's money there to hire more men and women that are gonna go out there to make our streets safe. And then when you hire them, you have community policing. Bring back the walking beats. Bring back you know, a collective group of people that know each other. When I grew up in Brockton, the police, they knew each other and they knew the residents they protected. I also think right now, Brockton doesn't look good. Perception's reality, it looks dirty, right? We need to have code in force. If I'm elected mayor, it's going to happen. Right now, the ones that are on the books are not being adhered to. As a city councilor, you know, we, we are coming up pretty soon to have a license revocation hearing. Uh, if there's a license granted for someone to do auto repair work, they can't do it on the weekends. It's a quality of life issue. You know, you deserve better as residents. You pay taxes. So, you know, I think if I'm elected mayor, uh, economic development, that has to continue. That train has to go down the track. Mayor Coppin was doing some wonderful things downtown. We need to do that. $190 million invested in 2019, but also all around the city of Brockton. And with my business background, with my law background, it served me well as an elected official locally as a city council. But now I want to take the next step and be the CEO and work in collaboration. But we need to do better. We deserve it. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan, what policies and programs do you support, do you suggest for supporting the senior population in Brockton? Yeah, I mean, again, without the seniors, uh, where would we be, right? My mom and dad are here right now, and they're in the, on a fixed income. And that's why I said it earlier, I filed an ordinance to make sure we protect the most vulnerable. You know, people are losing their houses in Brockton, right? The foreclosure epidemic, predatory lending. And, and a lot of them were senior citizens, and that's just not right. Today I went to the Council on Aging Harvest Luncheon, and it was great to see so many folks that are engaged and excited about Brockton. They're talking about Fannie Farmers downtown. My mom and dad met at Center Theater in the 50s. You know, we need to make sure that the seniors are protected, number one, safety. They need to feel safe in their community, number one. Number two, economic. They need to make sure that they, you know, they don't have to decide, do I pay my, my mortgage or do I buy my, that's not right. We, and I get calls like that from people, ladies and gentlemen. So as an elected official, what I have done is I've worked to draft ordinances and laws that protect the seniors and the vets, but we can do better and we have to do better. We owe it to them. Without that generation, we wouldn't be here. Jimmy and I wouldn't be candidates. So um, it's, it would really be paramount, not just because my folks are here, but it's due to do the right thing at all times, ma'am. Mr. Pereira. Yes. <clears throat> so through my studies and uh, my uh, experience working at Old County Planning Council, we've worked with the elderly. We continue to work with the elderly. Uh, we have an ombudsman program where uh, we connect our elderly uh, community to uh, elderly services, such as all calling elderly service, such as council on aging, and also transportation as well. Uh, so what I want to do for our elderly community is not just draft the ordinances and uh, things of the sort, but also implement them and making sure that they're working, and also, again, expand on innovative practices that are going to engage our elderly community and make sure that they're staying here for the long run. Uh, they're not just losing their houses, they're leaving, uh, because they want to go to a community that's going to work for them. Uh, they want uh, livable spaces, they want to make sure that uh, housing is uh, uh, adequate enough as well. Uh, so we need to revamp the, uh, the zoning, uh, the ordinances as well, so to include in-law apartments uh, for expansion of those that are able to do so. Uh, but also, again, making sure that public safety is a priority, making sure that if you're walking out of your home, is there a place for you to uh, take a rest if you're going for a stroll? Uh, and that's what it means to have placemaking. And also making sure that uh, the uh, law enforcement agencies know where our communities are. We have a volunteer program where if you're an elderly person and you can't shovel, uh, they would go out to your home. We need to make sure that we have volunteers there. So I want to create a youth and uh, senior councils. Uh, they have one in uh, Stoughton. And that kind of helps build the communication and the engagement between uh, different generations. And that's something that 
I uh, would have loved to do, but unfortunately I lost my uh, grandparents at an early age. So, uh, But I'm blessed to uh, have uh, grandparents in our community, such as Inez uh, Figueroa, such as uh, Joe Walia, and a few other people. I don't want to uh, give them the age, Thank but uh, people that we love. So we have to work for our elderly community. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Pereira, what is your assessment of the city's crime statistics and how well that measures the effectiveness of current strategies? Mm -hmm. What will be your main focus when it comes to improving public safety? Great question. Uh, so right now, uh, even through my experiences growing up, in the early 1990s, uh, in 2000s, uh, and even now too, you still see uh, a lot of gun violence. Uh, you still see uh, a lot of the same issues with the drug epidemic as well. Uh, so there's a variation of things that are going on now. Uh, you may see the, the statistics that uh, uh, homicides have gone down, but property crimes have uh, gone up. So we want to address this by making sure that we're looking at the uh, neighborhood associations and increasing communication uh, with our community members. So uh, through design, I want to focus on creating more neighborhood associations, something that you've seen through the previous administration, uh, late Mayor Carpenter, and you've seen in other communities as well. But creating these neighborhood associations and uh, basically educating people about Neighborhood Crime Watch, which is the, plat the uh, platform that we'll use. Um, the Neighborhood Association will be the vehicle. Uh, and also, again, having police officers, not just doing walking beats downtown, but in different wards as well, too, to make sure that there is neighborhood uh, connections going on. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're educating our police officers on cultural competency as well, because it's not something that just needs to be brought into the school systems or city hall, but different uh, uh, agencies and departments that are providing uh, human services. Uh, so again, we want to make sure that we're looking at innovative practices uh, and not just the same old, same old that we've been doing for so long that really hasn't bring any solutions. Uh, I think when we have not just more police officers, but more community engagements, we have police officers that know who the community members are and more community members who know the, who the police officers are. Uh, so it's paramount that we not just have these conversations, Thank but you. have engagement. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I mean, I've said it many times, we need to have a safer community, uh, and, I, and I would hire more police, uh, and again, institute community policing and, and neighborhood watch programs, enhance those. Right now, we're very fortunate in the city of Brockton because we're in the Plymouth County. The DA's office is here. Uh, they don't have to be in Brockton, but they are on Main Street, and we have the state police working in collaboration with Brockton PD and also the feds. Uh, the FBI uh, is, is here on a regular basis. Um, there is a direct correlation between crime, criminal activity, and drugs. I mean, that's just a hardcore fact. And we're never going to cure crime in society, but we need to minimize it. And some things that I've done as a city council have appropriated budget uh, dollar amounts so we could have the shot spotter system here in the city of Brockton. Uh, we also have the license plate reader system in Brockton. Recently, I appropriated $250,000 to buy five more vehicles. We need to have tools in the toolbox that are going to help our law enforcement to help curb crime. And also in collaboration with the schools because People are dying of drugs. That's what it is, young and old. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't discriminate. It, people are just dying. So what we need to do is work in collaboration as a community, but it starts with the elected officials, working with the clergy members, working with the schools, and ultimately the children, because that's, what we're, that's why Jimmy and I are running. I mean, to make a difference that are going to impact the next generation of Brocktonians. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Sullivan. According to the Boston Globe, Plymouth County, which you know includes Brockton and Bridgewater, yes. experienced a 26% decrease in overdose deaths from 2017 to 2018, vastly better than the statewide decline of barely 1% during the same time. The city's champion plan, which started in February 2016, enables anyone to walk into the police department and ask for a referral to addiction treatment. What will you do to continue to encourage the downward trend of opiate, opioid use and deaths in Brockton? Well, I do want to applaud uh, the late Mayor Coppin. A champion plan was, was a wonderful endeavor. It needs to continue. Um, for the last 10 years, I've served as a volunteer, an unpaid member of the chairman of the board at the Good Samaritan Medical Center. Uh, and I deal with the doctors and the PAs and the nurses, and they're saying the same thing. People are dying. And as a dad with three young kids, I'm very concerned. There's a thing called Skittle parties, where kids show up and they throw different color pills and they pull them out like a Skittle and eat it. I mean, it, it's craziness. But I think what we need to do is we need to enhance the services, wraparound services that are going to combat people's deaths due to drugs. And also, again, it, it linkages back to criminal activity. So we as a community need to have a safe community. I'm on the Plymouth County Advisory Board. I've been on there for 10 years. I, I'm the vice chair of it. And you're 100% accurate, doing well in Brockton. 
but not well enough. We need to do better because people are dying. And so it's, it's the fact that we have Signature and Good Samaritan and the VA, we have three medical facilities and the Neighborhood Health Center. We need to work in collaboration approach to make sure that, number one, the kids are being educated, uh, you know, multi-language education, making sure that they understand how dangerous it is, and also providing the services like Mayor Carpenter did with the Champion Plan. We have to build upon the successes to save lives, and I will do that if I'm elected mayor, without question. Thank you. Mr. Pereira. Thank you. Uh, if elected mayor, I would focus on the uh, holistic approach of bringing solutions to the table uh, and the holistic approach of making sure that uh, what we have now at the uh, mainspring or in other uh, institutions uh, is the in and out, the shelter approach. And we need to change that. Uh, but we need to do it through collaborative measures. So I want to bring uh, all the stakeholders together and look at not just relocating, uh, the uh, uh, shelter, but uh, revamping the system there as well. Uh, we need to look at not just, uh, again, a bed, but a, a place that they can uh, grow and educate and receive the help that they need, uh, and also the platform to thrive as well. So at the CSX site, there's an opportunity there where we would be able to uh, bring a, 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 a campus site uh, development where you'll not just have housing, but you'd have a cafeteria space where they would not just be fed, but learn how to eat uh, and uh, learn nutritional values. I believe if you uh, give a person a fish, you feed them for a day, teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. Accompanying that uh, cafeteria and living space would be the workshop area where you'd uh, receive assistance and guidance on workforce development, job preparedness. You'd also receive uh, help, and help on uh, uh, substance abuse and uh, uh, mental health uh, assistance as well, but also financial literacy and how you can uh, be able to uh, have a uh, push up and not just a handout. We wanna make sure that we're building uh, our community back and make sure that we are educating the youth also on the, uh, 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 the uh, downfalls of drug abuse. So making sure that we engage them in, in the school system, but also out into the community as well. Because again, in my opinion, it's best to not wait for them to come to you, but go to where they're at. Uh, so taking the proactive approach, not the reactive approach. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan, we'll start with the next question. Brockton currently has an urban revitalization plan that has been described as an amenable 20-year game plan to redevelop 26 downtown properties, helping to leverage public investment and to attract private dollars. How would you work with city council members to continue to revitalize Brockton and attract new businesses? So as a city council for the last 14 years, I uh, actually was the one to bring 40-hour smart growth zoning to Brockton. And I brought it forward and I said to my colleagues, this is going to be a catalyst for investment downtown. And some of them looked at me, uh, but we, we passed it. And you know what? It worked, ladies and gentlemen. That's why Trinity Financial came downtown and invested $30 million. That's why Vincentes did a natural expansion over the old style market of a $3 million expansion. Now, that's when you're a legislator. That's when you're a city council. When you become a mayor, you're an administrator. So you need to work in collaboration. We need to make sure that the economic basis continues. The Ganley Building is going to get a, a state grant. It's already been approved. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito and I met the other day, 75 Commercial Street. It's gonna be market rate housing, not affordable housing, market rate housing. The old Kresge Building, that's gonna be uh, an investment. It's gonna be up in the next year or so. And you look at West Elm Street, 47 West Elm Street was taken down, it was a fire. And this guy, Joffrey Anatole, is investing $10 million. These are the things we need to do, but we also need to expand throughout the city of Brockton. Right now, when you look at Kmart, you know, it's, it's desolate down there. They haven't had a supermarket down there in 10 years. It's just not right. So as the mayor of Brockton, you work with your legislative body, the city council. I have a great working relationship, and also the state officials. City of Brockton has three state reps and one state senator. They have the purse strings. We need to get the money to come back, but we need to make sure that the investors come to Brockton with historic tax credits and the benefits. And, and I really think the, the future is bright for Brockton if we keep banging the drum and making sure investors realize we have the commuter rail, it's a gateway city, and it's a heck of a place to live and grow a business. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you can now each take a deep breath. We're going to move on to our last question uh, for both of you. Um, and I goofed up a little bit with the last round, so Mr. Pereira, I'm going to ask you this question first. Um, what do you perceive to be the number one issue that must be addressed in your first 100 days in office. Mm -hmm. If addressing this issue has a budgetary impact, how will you pay for it? Mm -hmm. Great question. <clears throat> so through my experience, uh, 
as a uh, planner, I know that uh, there is no one issue. It's always a multifaceted approach. There are a number of things because everything is basically interconnected. Uh, so my first 100 days, the one thing that I know uh, for certain that we need to focus on is communication. Uh, we need to make sure that the community knows uh, where to uh, get adequate uh, resources or adequate uh, service provided by the city uh, and uh, also making sure that we're following guidelines. Right now there's a federal Title VI guideline that says that with every community that is over a population of a thousand or more, you need to make sure that you're providing interpretive or translative services. We have a very diverse community, uh, taxpayers and uh, people that you know are here uh, legally that want to know how to uh, invest and work with the city uh, and we're leaving them out. So we need to make sure that we're one, following guidelines, uh, federal guidelines at that, and two, making sure that we're providing access to everyone uh, that are here uh, and working for the city of Brockton and uh, investing in the city of Brockton. Uh, again, we'll also make sure that we're looking at uh, solving the Russell Lopes case. Uh, that is a discrimination uh, lawsuit that is really plaguing the city uh, and it's kind of a holding, uh, it's a cloud over our heads. So, uh, and again, making sure that we engage our community members. And that for, for me, uh, for certain, is the top priority is to make sure that the community knows that uh, if elected, I'll be working for them. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. I think, I mean, you need to kind of vet it out and do a quick audit when you get there, right? I mean, that's what needs to happen. So you can talk about public safety and hiring more police in the schools, and we got to make sure that the money comes in under the bill uh, and development and that train going down the track. But at the end of the day, it's making sure that the Brockton residents, the people that you serve, when you knock on the door and ask for their, their vote, uh, and on November 5th, I am asking for your vote, um, they, they feel that they when they go to City Hall, they're getting what they deserve. So you need to really revamp right now. You need to make sure that there's inclusive feeling. For too long, there's been borders up, and those days have to go. They have to break that down. Brockton is here. We can't afford to go down there. We can only go up can only go up, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion. So I think that if you say 100 days, I mean, you have to look at, number one, what's a lawful mechanism, right? I voted against the Brockton United Ordinance twice uh, because it wasn't lawful. There was a clause in there that violated federal law. If I'm elected mayor, I will never, uh, never vote for anything that's going to be illegal. I'm a lawyer, and I'm also a duly elected official. So I think what we need to do, whoever wins, Jimmy, is to listen to the people, you know, have a sit-down strategy, see what the priorities are, some on the west side versus east, north, south, and make sure that the mayor and the city council and the school committee do their job and work for the people. That's why we, we aim to serve. Thank you. We are now going to move on to closing statements. Just a reminder, you have a one minute closing statement when it will be done in the reverse order of your opening statements. Um, so Mr. Sullivan, Thank you. Will begin. Thank you very much. Again, I want to just thank each and every one of you for being here. It's a busy night in Brockton, right? Councilor Lodger, Brockton High, the Patriots are going to be kicking off in a little while. Uh, but you're here because you care about what we call home, Brockton. And I care, and that's why I'm running. And that's why I've served for 14 years. And I want to continue to serve because I want to make sure that Brockton and my three kids and my wife and my parents and my in-laws get the fair share in each and every one of you. I want to be your voice. And that's why I'm running, because we can't afford to not have experience. Experience matters. There's no learning curve when you're CEO and mayor. You have to know. Right now, I am the mayor, because Moses is in Cape Verde. And I've got a conference calls today, and I've talked to the solicitor today. These are skill sets that I already have. I already possess those. So you're talking about a serious job, the mayor of Brockton. And I'm humbly asking you on November 5th, please look at my background. Go to my website, electrobertsullivan.com. Call me, I'll give you my business card with my cell phone. I have proudly served for 14 years as a council at large, all seven years, all 28 precincts. I want to continue to be the next mayor of Brockton. My name is Robert Sullivan. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pereira. I want to humbly thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for voting me past the preliminary election. I ran in 2017 because I had a sense of urgency. My experience, the experience, again, that is your experience, is what propelled me to run for mayor. I didn't care how strong Mayor Carpenter was at that time. I seen the issues and I ran towards it. I did that again in 2019 because I know I am ready. The question is, is Brockton ready? Are you ready for change? The change that we need, the time is now, and on November 5th, I hope that you make the right decision that's going to move this city forward. We need it, we deserve it. Thank you for your time. I humbly appreciate your vote. Please make sure you register to vote. The deadline is October 15th, 16th, but we'll say 15th, just so you could get a little rush on it.
because this is very, very important. We are in some treacherous times. And again, if I have your vote, it's not just for me, it's for we, we the people. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We really appreciate your participation. Thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. And I would be remiss by not thanking Kate Boland of the League of Women Voters um, and Vedna Haywood from the Haitian American Chamber of Conference for being our timekeepers. It is a thankless job. Um, And I'd like to thank all of our candidates for their participation in this democratic process and the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce of Massachusetts and the League of Women Voters for collaborating to sponsor this event. Please remember to vote on November 5th. Please encourage your friends and your neighbors to vote. Offer a ride if you don't think they can get to the polls. If you will be out of town, please contact the Election Commission for the uh, information about absentee ballots that will be available so you can, in fact, vote in this election. And please remember, democracy is not a spectator sport. We need you to be involved. With that, I would like to pass this to uh, Vedna Haywood for a few closing remarks and thank yous. Um, again, thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to thank Elizabeth um, for moderating. She did a wonderful job. Um, I want to thank the constituents of Brockton for coming out to watch the candidates. Uh, I also want to thank the library, Paul, his staff, for providing us with this space. Um, thank you to the candidates. Thank you to the candidates um, for being participants um, coming out on this night. Um, thank you to Brockton um, Community Access TV. And also, I just wanted to say, discourse and critical thinking are essential tools when it comes to securing progress in a democratic society. But in the end, unity and engaged participation are what make it happen. Enjoy your evening. Thank you.